So in the last video, we talked about the cross-coupled pair. In this video, we're going to talk about the Pierce oscillator, or uh, as I like to call it, the Pierce module, because it's not actually an oscillator by itself. Uh, so remember that we said if we have uh, an imperfect um, LC circuit, or we've got a capacitor and an inductor, which would give us a perfect oscillator, but we've got this annoying resistor here, that we can get rid of this resistor uh, by placing a negative resistance in series with it to cancel it out. And we achieved that negative resistance last time uh, by using the cross-coupled pair. So essentially, by properly configuring uh, two transistors, in this case they're NMOS, but they can be PMOS transistors, uh, you can achieve a small signal uh, Im input impedance that has a negative real part. So it's got a negative real part plus some uh, reactive part, and that's generally capacitive, so really it would be uh, minus. Um, so, okay, uh, but the cross-coupled pair uses two transistors, so is there any way to achieve uh, a negative impedance with only one transistor? And it turns out that the answer is yes. So that is called the Pierce oscillator, and this is the circuit. Uh, without further ado, so it's just a single NMOS, and it's connected to two capacitors. The one on the left, I'm going to label C1. The one on the right is C2. And then NMOS. And the impedance is looking in to this port, Zn. And so this is the circuit. And you'll notice that I have not drawn a ground on this circuit, and there's a very good reason for that. Uh, I could, if I wanted to, have drawn a ground here, and that's what uh, that's what we will do in analyzing the circuit. But we don't uh, we we don't want to do that because we're going to do some interesting things uh, playing around with this circuit, uh, things that you may not have seen before, and I certainly hadn't until uh, until up to this point. So okay, uh, let's. So I've said that the input impedance has a negative real part. Well, uh, you might say, well, prove it. Uh, okay, so let's just analyze the circuit. So if we draw out the small signal model and we draw a, uh, a source here, it can be a voltage source or a current source, uh, and I actually like to use a simultaneous voltage and current source. But So if we draw one here, uh, let's go this direction. It doesn't actually matter which direction we go, but uh, you'll get the same result either way. So we've got a source, uh, a test source, that will allow us to determine the impedance We've, we're going to ignore the output resistance of the transistor for simplicity, uh, but the result would be just slightly modified. Uh, so this is GM VGS. And then we've got a capacitor over here. And remember, I said that we could have draw, drawn the ground down on the bottom if we wanted to, but I wasn't going to do that just yet. Now, if we want to perform node analysis on this circuit, we do want to define a reference. And since this is looks to be the most common node, I'm going to define this as ground. And remember, we're free to do that. Uh, we can define whatever node we want as ground. So this is the gate, uh, has voltage VG. This is the drain of the transistor, VD. And so we want to solve this circuit. Uh, now, the easiest way I've found to do this is just solve for IX directly. So IX. Uh, is equal to just the current flowing out of that same node. So GM VGS, uh, but since VS, this is VS down here, since VS is equal to zero, it's just GM VG. Uh, and then, so this is C1, this is C2, uh, plus VD over Z2. And Z2 is just uh, one over G omega. C2. It's the impedance of the capacitor. I'm just shorthanding it so that it uh, makes our, nice, our lives nice and simple. Uh, but the interesting part about this uh, way of sol solving the circuit, and this actually works for all transistor small signal models where you want to find the impedance across a certain node, uh, VG we can just find directly with IX. So VG is just minus IX times the impedance of C, uh, C1, or it's the voltage drop uh, across this capacitor, so it's going to be a, a negative voltage. So VG is just that. Um, and VD, similarly, uh, we can find using VG, uh, which now we know uh, it's VG, or minus IXZ1, plus VX. 
because we want the voltage drop across the capacitor plus the voltage drop across the source, but sources use the opposite sign convention, so we're actually increasing our voltage. Um, okay, now we have our full equation, so Ix is equal to GMVG or minus GM Ix ZC1 uh, plus VD, which is minus Ix Z1 plus Vx over Z2. Uh, and then that's all we need. So we can factor the Ix's and the Zx's. So Ix, we've got a 1, we've got a GM Z1, and we've got a, what is that, a Z1 over Z2. And then for Vx, it's just Vx over Z2. So if we multiply both sides by Z2 and divide by Ix, we get Z2 plus uh, Z1 plus GM Z1 Z2 equals uh, Vx over Ix. And so I just uh, I rearranged the order and multiplied by, by Z2. Well, that's just 1 over J omega C2, the impedance of capacitor 2, plus 1 over J omega C1 plus gm over j omega c1 times j omega c2. We've got two j's, so we've got uh, 1 over j omega. Over here, it's c equivalent, uh, where c equivalent is just the two capacitors in series, c1, c2, over c1 plus c2. And then, so this is our imaginary part. Plus, since the two j's uh, cancel out to give negative 1, uh, we have minus gm over omega squared c1 c2. So that is the, sorry, uh, that is the input impedance of our Pierce oscillator. That's our final result, and that's exact. That's not using any any approximations except that the circuit behaves linearly, which generally we uh, we need to do if we want to be sane. So we can model this circuit, uh, which I'm going to redraw just right here. We can model our Pierce oscillator circuit. This is C1, this is C2. And remember, I'm not defining this as ground out of restraint, uh, because that's that will help us much in future videos. Uh, Zn. And then we mo we just model this as a series resistance, or negative R, and a series capacitance, CEQ. And again, CEQ is as above. It's just the series combination of the two capacitors. So that's cool. Uh, basically, we got what, instead of two transistors and no capacitors, we got, or two transistors and parasitics, we got one transistor, so we only need to use one active device. And if we're using really big transistors, like really high frequency, uh, large transistors made out of gallium nitride or something, then we actually want to minimize the number of transistors and we can have uh, off-chip capacitors are less of an issue. So that's that's why we might want to use this uh, this option. And so that gives us a negative resistance, but we're not uh, finished with the oscillator part of it. Remember, we have to, in order to get the circuit to oscillate, we need to connect uh, a resistance of the same value. This is CEQ and an inductor in order for the circuit to actually oscillate. And then, so here, this is this was our old uh, port, and I'm actually going to redraw this in red. So we need to connect an inductor, or sorry, a resistor, and an inductor here in order. Wow, those are ugly. Uh, in order for the circuit to oscillate. So uh, in reality, we can just connect an inductor, uh, physically speaking, because every inductor is going to have some series loss to it, our loss. Uh, so we don't, we don't need to actually connect a physical resistor. We're, that The resistance is generally going to be uh, intrinsic to the inductor. And then we have an oscillator here. And the frequency of oscillation, uh, omega osc or om omega naught, if you prefer, is just 1 over the square root of L CEQ. 
and we're done. So that is the Pierce oscillator. In my opinion, that's the easiest way to analyze it. And in the next video, I'm going to show you why I was so insistent on not calling the bottom note ground until the last possible moment. And uh, that's going to lead straight into analysis of the Colpitts oscillator, as well as other oscillators uh, that are based around this topology. So uh, I believe that every uh, single transistor um, oscillator can be derived from this Pierce oscillator topology, which uh, I think is, is, is pretty neat.